とってもいいことだと思うわそれそれは繰り返す破壊と再生崩壊と創造の神話祈り満ちる久遠の世界に最後の神は君臨し続けるフェイトグランドオーダーコスモス・イン・ザ・ロストベルト創世滅亡輪廻ユガクシェートラ好評配信中 Hello, everyone. Welcome back for some more Let's Play Fate Grand Order. We're in Yugaku Shetra, and、uh, comments have been coming in since I've started uploading.、Uh, for one, I was. I, I forgot that. No, no, this is when the point diverged. It's not the time, it's now. But,、uh, and this just means that because they have a different way of counting days, it's like we're just confused. Don't worry about it too much. The other thing is that Neza's actually gone. And Nasu confirmed that. Which is. Oh! Oh, the stakes are a lot higher than I would have thought. Okay. Didn't really get that. Anyways, we're back from the Zero Sale. What's with this rock? You see that? That's weird.、Um, we're back from the Zero Sale. Things are looking literally shiny. Like, look at all those flowers. Let's,、uh, let's take a look. Return of Paradise, the shape of evil to be cut off. Interesting. It's a long one. We got a long one, boys. Interesting. I experienced the Kali Yuga ending several times after Asvat. Oh, this is him. I experienced the Kali Yuga ending several times after Asvataman was taken from me. I felt the light of creation wrapping me in a tight embrace, just as powerless to do anything as the people absorbed in the worthless prayers. As long as the god of this world doesn't consider you defective, at least there's no pain. You don't feel it. The light just keeps getting brighter, blinding you and even numbing you to the passage of time. The next thing you know, you're right back where you started, only everything around you has been changed. I don't know what the locals make of that experience, but it was awful enough to almost make me want to vomit. I'd rather sick my head inside a festering dead body or kiss a pile of excrement from a prison cell without plumbing. Those options might be revolting, but at least I wouldn't have to be so frightened. That's kind of true. I'd rather those than deal with something as terrifying as the world wrapping around in a horrible way like that. So, well, I hate to admit it, when that light finally subsided and I found myself standing there, I would be relieved that I had avoided being taken away. But it was never long after that my relief turned to worry to the point I could barely think straight. <laughs> I don't do that very often, though. Maybe I just got lucky this time. What about the next time or the time after that? So, in retrospect, it was inevitable that I would take action like this sooner or later. This time, I managed to avoid the light by escaping to the reverse side of the world, so I thought I might feel differently now, but. Surprisingly, nothing changed. Upon laying eyes on the new world of this cycle, I felt the same things I always, as, as always, loathing and discomfort. To use more contemporary slang, I just can't even with this world. <laughs> I guess it's God bothers me even more than I expected.、Uh, in many ways, it's a perfect world. And yet. It's also just unbearable. Interesting that that's what you think. That's really interesting. Where are we now? Foo! Look at him skitter. The air smells sweet, and there's waters and flowers everywhere you look, and there's a calm and gentle breeze. What is this place? I don't know the most surprising, what the most surprising part is. You're standing in almost the same spot that we zero sailed from. Our, local, our location didn't change. The rest of this world did. Thankfully, there are no hostiles in the immediate area. Let's begin by paying another visit to the town of Bichu.、Um, is something wrong, Pepe? You look kind of angry. What's that? You're jealous of how soft and smooth my skin is. Why, it's on the upkeep, hun! Unlike Miss Never Changing Akuda, I actually have to work to make sure I look this good. Go on, feel how supple my cheeks are for yourself, t h e y r e my pride and joy, you know, heart. That's that's okay. 
Oh, silly, there's no need to be shy. But anywho, going to visit that town next sounds just dandy. The topography and plan light changes that come with the new Yuga are all surface level details. The thing that changed the most after what Arjuna did will have been the people. Okay, let's go check out the town then. Understood. But make sure to keep the border's location in mind at all times from now on, Tanner. I don't want us to ever have to run for our lives like that again if we can help it. Yeah, now that we know how it works and we can get a timer, you know, it makes sense. And oh my goodness, what in the- this place looks amazing! Foo -foo -foo. Wow, there's not a single brick out of place now. In fact, this is exactly what the town looked like when I first came to this world. I can't believe it. It's like the Kali never attacked at all. What in the world's going on? Then there's the people going about their lives here. They all look happy now. They're practically beaming. Great. Look who it is. Goodness, you're all okay. The oh my god, do the people change too? This is wonderful news, just wonderful. This truly must be the gods' will. All is right in the world once again. Oh no, that isn't quite right, is it? First, I owe you all an apology. No matter how dire the circumstances were at the time, I should never have spoken to you like that. I know it won't be enough to truly make amends, but I'll be including all of you in my prayers from now on. I only ask that you please not hold what I said against the people of this lovely town. Ah, uh, yesterday he wanted to run us out of town, now he's all happy to see us? Foo-foo! Even Foo's nestling up to him? Didn't you say we were godless heretics you wanted nothing to do with? Don't be ridiculous! The fact you're here now is proof you overcame the last Yuga's difficulties with us. That makes you all one of us now. You're our friends, our family! And not only that, today's the blessed first day of Krita Yuga. The Yuga of Peace! Are you hungry? If you like, you're welcome to come and eat with me at my mansion. Or would you prefer some fine ornaments for the young ladies? We have plenty of beautiful flowers. We kind of want to explore the town a bit, so... I see. Well, that's a pity. I was hoping to introduce you to the rest of the townspeople. Oh, by the way, that mansion over there is my house. I'm afraid it ended up that big on account of being, my being mayor. It's very embarrassing living somewhere as ostentatious as that, but it is not without meaning. Please, feel free to come visit me when you have the time. You'll always be welcome in my home. Good day, then. Oh, this is very strange. What the heck? I've never seen someone go from jerkwad to sweetheart in no time flat like that. You seem delated. It's probably because Kritiyuga is the Yuga of Happiness. It tends to make most locals friendly and kind-hearted. Though, of course, I'm sure there are exceptions. You guys again. Well, Master, it's a Jai. He doesn't seem any different than he did before. I'm not judging either way. I'm just surprised how simply hearing him click his tongue again made him feel so relieved. It took me so long to realize that that titch, T-C-H, is a tongue click. I didn't get that for so long. Because, of course, I'm a, I'm a baby boy playing RPGs and I hear a character go, titch. And I'm like, what's a titch? And then there's... Ah, it's you guys. This is such a surprise. So you made it to the new Yuga, huh? That's great. Yes, it wasn't easy, but we did make it. I'm glad to see you're okay too, Asha. I sure am. I prayed extra hard, so I didn't get hurt at all. I see. That's wonderful. Well, but speaking of hurt, is your dog, I mean, Vihan okay? He hurt his leg before the Kali Yuga, right? I don't see him with you. Huh? Oh, God, no. Who's Vihan? He not only didn't survive... He got purged. Oh, that's the worst. Oh, that's the worst. Wow. I can't believe it. Oh, don't, don't do the fade out. No. Why? Okay. Okay. Well, I just realized that that killed the audio. I was trying to fix something, because there was a bit, apparently a hum, and I killed the audio. The audio should be back now. There we go. Yeah, I was, I was looking at my, my, uh, my recorder, and there was, like, background noise when there was supposed to be silence. I'm like, well, that's not right. Very strange. Let's see if this fixes it. Anyways, we got, um... Interesting. Um... You know what? Let's 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 use Rama here. 
we haven't used Rama much. And then otherwise, I want to make a team that'll be the team of always having a good time, which will be these three. And then you in the back, uh, you can get, um, well, if we want, we could actually do two things of the, which we'll give you that. We'll give you Buster. We'll give you, which is the one that gives you meter. It's the, the, um, it's the, the one with her and the outfit, right? The little, you know what I'm talking about right there. Yeah. Increase your gauge 8% each turn. Then we can go... You're a good 4-star for sure. Right? Um, so we can go with you. And then we just need someone cheap in the back. I mean, honestly... This is where I use my... Big meme boy. Here we go. I, I, gotta, I gotta get him going. And we'll give you Necromancy. Right? Because then, then that's that's a way to survive better. I totally missed it right there. And we can give you then... Um, you know what? Let's give you your bond up. So let's go to uh, level. There we go. Noble Phantasm. There we go. Perfect. This is my just general team, right? And as for my outfit, I actually really love these skills. Overcharge, Star Blaster, and Escape Pod. That's sick. Well, no, you know what? Let's let's get leveling up the new one. Because we got it here. There it is. Got the Anniversary Blonde. Replica of the costume once worn by the King of Knights. I guess this is what she would have worn as a dude. Sure, we get Mana Burst. Buster Card Up. Confident in Victory. Gain a large amount of stars. Oh, wow. This is really good for Emya. And apply Guts. Wow, okay, sure. Sure, then we can get that leveled up. Let's go. Yeah, things are weird. Foo. All right, it should be safe to discuss this now that we've come this far. What is the meaning of this? This world runs on the Yuga cycle, but needless to say, these aren't proper Yugas. A real Krita Yuga, or Satya Yuga, depending on who you ask, is supposed to last for 4,800 years. Then the Trita Yuga is supposed to last for 3,600 years, then the Devapara Yuga for 2,400, and then the Kali Yuga for 1,200. And on top of that, these are in God years, where each one is equivalent to 360 human years. Oh god, so it's supposed to be forever. Suffice to say, we're talking about a really long cycle. Whereas in this world, it would seem the only ratios, only the ratios have been preserved, given that each type of yuga is apparently 4, 3, 2, and 1 day long, respectively. That's right, but the people I've talked to here said that things weren't always like this. It used to be that the yuga cycle lasted for hundreds of years, or maybe even longer. So that is what this world was like immediately after it was pruned away and became a lost belt. Right, I'm sure the period where the Kali showed up... Uh, I'm sure the period where Kali would show up had to have been proportionately longer back then, but I'd also bet they showed up much less frequently than they do now. Otherwise, the people here would have gone extinct long ago. But over time, the cycle got shorter and shorter, and now it only lasts ten days. I have to think that drastically shortening the cycle is why there are so many more Kali now. They used to only let out a little bit at a time, but now the floodgates have opened, so to speak. Why did Arjuna shorten the Yuga cycle so much? Part of it is thanks to that disciple pouring poison into his ear, like I said earlier. And part of it is that the Tree of Emptiness has given him power that he didn't have before that lets him do so. Yes, I know that only addresses the how, not the why. I'm getting to that. I think the reason he sped up things so much is to reach whatever end he has in mind for all this much faster. In short, it looks like he's in a rush to create his perfect world. What do you mean by that? Okay, now I can finally answer the question that's been plaguing all of you. What exactly happened earlier? The answer is that it's something unique Arjuna does. Something that isn't meant to happen in a normal Yuga. Whenever one of these short Yuga cycles come to an end, he purges everything he considers defective and unnecessary from this world. He believes that by repeating the process over and over, he'll eventually arrive at a perfect world devoid of anything it shouldn't have, or, as he thinks of it, evil. Damn, that's one hell of a destination. 
I see. So this purging must include living things, not just inanimate objects. Right. And as far as I can tell, when a living thing is purged, it's, well, it's like it never even existed. So that's what happens to the poor dog that couldn't run after breaking its leg. I can't believe it. Asha loved that dog more than anything, and now she doesn't even remember him. Yeah, that's harsh. It happens to anyone who's unlucky to be killed by a collie, too. That's sort of a disqualifying offense. Same goes for people who end up as social pariahs, or if Arjuna himself ends up judging you to be flawed. When the next Yuga rolls around, they just cease to exist. It might sound contradictory, but I think Arjuna adjusts for things like that whenever he remakes the world. I see. Well, that would explain how continuity and discontinuity can exist simultaneously in a new Yuga. For example, Asha may have completely forgotten her beloved dog, but she still remembered all of you. But how does such a thing even work? I'm not entirely sure myself, but I can tell you what that blabbermouth disciple of the foreign god said. He said Arjuna collects every bit of data that makes up the world whenever he blows it away, like, kind of like a snapshot. Then when it's time to begin a new Kriti Yuga, he uses that data, let's call it Snapshot A, to reassemble the world. As he puts everything back together, he removes all the elements he deemed effective and unnecessary. And in the end, he has a new world based on Snapshot A, but reflecting the changes he's made. I get it, he's a cheater. It's like updating a dev build at a AAA video game company. I say that because that's exactly how the builds worked in, like, like every time they updated the build at Bioware, that's how it worked. It, they literally called them snapshots. He's basically hacking his save data, changing the parameters to suit his preferences before reloading it. Cheaters, a scum of gamers anywhere, everywhere. Don't they know hacking saves takes all the fun of it? Yeah, I agree. He's not doing this to have fun. All he cares about is making what he considers to be the perfect world. A world consisting uh, only of what is truly necessary, with nothing wasted or evil to be found. <sighs> now I know what genre he's playing too. He's into 4X games. <laughs> I hate, I hate that genre title. I hate it. I, arg I got into a big Twitter spot. I'm like, literally, this is such a niche genre of games that like, People will know what a visual novel is, but you say 4X and they won't. They're like, yeah, well, it's a huge genre for PC gamers. I'm like, yeah, and kind of only PC gamers. It's really not a big one. <laughs> even the big, even he's like, yo, what are those? A 4X game is a simulation where the player just sets the initial parameters, then the world sort of plays out from there. And if you're a cheater, if something happens in your sim you don't like, say an enemy nation takes you by surprise and invades you, Hey, you save your game, hack your data, reload, and it's like the enemy nation was never, you, what, that was bothering you never existed. Or you just put in the cheat to give you the car in Age of Empires 2 over and over. That's the kind of thing we're talking about here, right? Arjuna's just doing that over and over until he wins, right? I swear, what's the point of even playing if you're just gonna cheat to win? Death to cheaters, that's what I say. I guess some people care about the destination, not the journey. Video game analogies aside, <laughs> if that's true, it sounds like Arjuna isn't remaking the world from scratch every time he resets the cycle then. Instead, he's basically treating the world like a model, adding new parts and removing old ones. Then it would stand to reason that, strictly speaking, the people here may not be dying and being brought back to life. Yeah, it seems more likely that everything down to their souls is being saved as data, and that their memories are being modified when they're put back into the new world. And if that's the case, we're talking about a much smaller scale feat than creating the entire universe from nothing. It's still a big friggin' deal, don't get me wrong. But if Arjuna's got every Indian divinity and support from the Tree of Emptiness, well, it's theoretically possible. I'm beginning to see the larger picture. There's something about this lost boat that is almost reminiscent of a singularity. The Russian, Scandinavian, and Chinese lost boats we've seen so far were the result of a world where some uh, definitive event happened in their respective past to dramatically change the course of history. But this Indian lost belt is still in the middle of its definitive moment. Here, its king is continually trying to evolve this world by regularly recreating with parameters that would be unthinkable in proper human history. While he has yet to reach his goal of a perfected world, I suspect the reason this world was pruned was... Uh, is the very act of trying to change it in such a manner. Is that- Oh, I read that weird. While he has yet to reach his goal of a perfected world, I suspect the reason this world was pruned is that the very act of trying to change it in such a manner was considered a mistake. 
Hmm? What is it, Director Grodolf? If you have any questions, please go right ahead. Do you ever shut up? I don't mind you explaining things, but I insist you do so concisely in a report I can read at my leisure. You just gave me all flashbacks to one of my teachers in the clock tower days who would lecture me for about like days on end. Who cares if the people here are technically dying or not when this world has remained? The part that actually matters is that we will die if we get caught in that. I suppose you do have a point. Of course I do. Now that I say we pivot this discussion to more practical matters, namely, how do we stay safe and what is our next course of action? You there, Pepperoncino. It's only by my good graces that you're running around here instead of being confined in the border and unlocking key. Now repay the favor by telling us what we can use, damn it! Something you can use? Hmm. Well, I guess I can think of one thing. Pulling off a feat that massive takes a lot of Arjuna, so he's unable to move around much. And I don't just mean that long stretch of time at the end of a Kala Yugo when he charged up that noble phantasm. I'm pretty sure that, unlike most servants, he doesn't do much of anything the rest of the time either. I guess he just doesn't have access to the energy he would need to do more than ride that Vimana of his. I think that's how he spent most of his time, just riding around the Tree of Emptiness on his Vimana. Of course, he might look like he's spacing out out there, but I'm sure he's actually keeping a close eye out for the next bit of evil to purge. It's probably got something to do with containing so many powerful divinities within himself. It would also explain why he seems so devoid of personality. But then, is that exactly why he would need other servants to handle things for him? Asfadaman did say something about that, didn't he? Yeah, he did. I think he called himself a... Lokapala? Lokapala. In original Indian mythology, Lokapala was said to protect this world. They were the guardians of all directions. Though I don't know what that could mean. We know who their Neza is now, but... Who are those other two servants? Are Okay, real question. Are we gonna get this Lost Belt's Neza as our Neza later? As a way to replace her? Huh. I'm afraid I don't know. I was already on the outs with Arjuna when he got around to summoning them. By that time, he just considered me an outsider. He didn't want need to worry about, though, since I'm Asavataman's former master. He did tell his servants to eliminate me if they happened to see me. Suffice to say, I have no idea what the true names are, though I get the feeling they're an archer and a caster. I think I can make an educated guess, but there's no point in speculation at this point. We need solid info. Well, this seems like a good time to tell you that those servants are not the only enemies we face here. they are also those sacred beasts, the mystical creatures that people refer to as the agents of God. Oh, those? The primitive guardian beasts are Juno made to counteract the Kali. They manifest naturally here. And since there are almost no Kali during the peaceful Krita Yuga, the beasts are supposed to just wander around like normal animals. Holmes, what did you mean by this seems like a good time? I suspect the answer to that in your next immediate course of action will be, to clear, will be clear to you soon enough. There they are. Sacred beasts. I guess that means Arjuna really doesn't want us here then. So of course, they'll attack us on sight now, just like the Kali. You said these beasts wander around just like ordinary animals, yes? Then we clearly can't let our guard down just because it's Krita Yuga now. Still, I don't know if it's the sunshine or what, but my body feels lighter now. This shouldn't take long. Yeah, I'll show you guys how well I can hold my own in a fight. Or, at least I hope I'll be able to. Are we going to get buffs, or are we just going to get less nerfs? Are we going to be normal? That's the question, right? That's the big question. Yeah, I switched my uh, I switched my thing, and the I I don't know what the humming was because there was like on my on my thing there was a bit of a hum. I don't know what that was. Very happy it's gone. Whatever that was that I couldn't hear. I'm gonna go click on the video, and it's gonna be like super loud, annoying. I bet. Uh, so we get Unforgiving World. No, oh, you, oh, so we still have Unforgiving World, but we have HP recovery all the time. Interesting. Very interesting. I mean, we're, we're dealing decent damage, so it seems like it is less, less of a debuff. So Merlin gets 13% per turn, huh? That's really not bad. Uh, let's go one, two, three. Very good. I'm so happy I got a Merlin. 
I'm so happy. Like it still stands. Like I look, I look at my Merlin. And I'm like, dang, dude, we got gotcha, you, fam. I even got him uh, kitted out with all sorts of stuff to heal him and get meter. Good stuff. Ow. Well, that hurt. That wasn't very nice of ya. Uh, let's go red. And then you, these two. We only got one battle after this, so. Very nice. Alright. Battle two. Oh, a Sarama. These are new. These are new indeed. Uh, so let's go... And let's give that to you. 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 Yeah, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Yo, yo, we, yo, we got this. So we'll go, you know what, let's go one, two. Is, well, is yours multi-hit or single hit? To a single, so we'll attack you with that, I think. And then move on to hurt you with, with the big crit up, so we'll try that. I, this is like super overkill considering the world naturally heals us, but that's fine. It's better to go overkill. How'd that do? No, oh, that sucks. That's a bit annoying. Alright, well. Here I thought my big boy moves would win, but... Let's see how much we heal. Let's see here. Okay, yeah, it's not bad. It's actually probably for the best that I got that. Okay, let's go, you know what? Let's go one, two, three. Do your stuff. Nice. Good stuff. Okay. And let's have you do that. And let's go one two, three. Alright. I mean, again, is it is it cheap and boring than going all out offensive? Yes. Do I care? No. Alright. Look at that healing. Oh, you love it. Incorruptible nails. These nails get no dirt under them. No dirt, no grime. Let's go like that. Alright. Not bad. Ooh, that's some big defense up, actually. Thwap, thwap, thwap. That's all you're gonna do. Okay. Um, you know what? Attack up. Let's get that going. Give me the bunker bolt. Give us some stars. Alright, so let's go. One, two, three. Let's see here. Get that big crit. Nope. Oh. That could have gone a lot better if we hit that crit, but oh well. Yeah, it seems like I mean, mind you, this isn't this isn't the uh, you know, the mash I would use. But it seems like, you know, going mash Merlin and then whoever else seems like a, a a good strategy to just not not worry about stuff kind of ever okay we're continuing on with the story a lot of story not a lot of uh battles which makes sense we're in the peace Okay, now that we've gone over how things genu generally work in this last belt, what do you think of it? Pupper. Well, we still remember the pupper. Ah. 
Ah, yeah, I know. I don't like it. I don't like it. Me neither. Ash and Vihan looked to me like they were best of friends. They were like family. And I'm positive that had nothing to do with how well Vihan could or couldn't run. It d didn't matter how well he could stand or how well he could hunt or stand guard either. As far as Asher was concerned, she just loved him and wanted him to stay by her side. <laughs> Aww, cuddling foo. So if the god of this world just erased the relationship for his own reasons, what happens to all the love she had for him? All the happiness she felt when they were together? Where does it go? Aw, oh, dang, you said it, girl. Well, oh, that's like Mundo sad. Foo foo! I wanna hug foo. I want to hug Fu. Amazing. The same girl who used to resemble nothing so much as a living doll expounding on love. Oh, this is just precious. I think I'm going to cry. Although, I wonder what Beryl would say if he saw this new mash. Let's not bring him up. Allow me to offer some criticism of this world from a different perspective. I'm sure it's been some time since a calendar meant anything in this world, but for the purposes of our discussion, let's say the year here is 2021. As I'm sure you're aware from visiting the nearby town, civilization here has not advanced anything like as far as in proper human history. That is not to say I only value post-industrial age advances, or that I have no appreciation for a life lived in harmony with nature. I assure you, neither is true. Though dang, I do wish I could get some wonderful crack cocaine here. I am merely saying that civilization as a whole has clearly not progressed here when compared to proper human history. That aspect alone is enough for me to declare this world a far cry from anything approaching the ideal. The march of civilization is stalled here, just like it has in the Chinese Lost Belt, albeit for very different reasons. And it hardly needs saying, but I don't like the way this god does things either. Cheaters get perma-ban, that's what I say. On another note, is everything okay, Rama? Something on your mind? I just realized something. Arjuna has obtained every Indian divinity in this Lost Belt's history, right? No, don't- are you gonna say Sita's in there? Then that would- oh! Then that would mean Sita's one of them. Yo, really? Just as I'm an avatar of Vishnu, Sita is an avatar of Vishnu's consort, Lakshmi. Of course, that doesn't mean they are one and the same, but they're certainly close enough, so then what should I do? What else? I have to save her. That is who I am. It's my very reason for existing. So love is your main motivator for defeating Arjuna? Well, that's just wonderful. What do you think of Arjuna, Pepe? Me? It's like I said, I thought he and this world were a dead end the moment I saw him, met him. Can't get much further than from my type than this version of Arjuna. He might be a pretty face, but that soul of his is ugly as sin. Master, there may not be any need for me to say this, but please let me say it again anyway. Pepe is a good person. I believe we can trust him, and I think we should work together with him on this. Well, I guess we're on the same page. Which is... Uh, I... I'm putting my foot down. I really hope Pepe doesn't betray us. I really hope Pepe doesn't betray us. Like, I I know that they're supposed to be the villains. But I... I, I don't know. I really like him. So... Oh, that's sweet. Thanks, you two. Nonetheless, the fact remains that you are a cryptor. Are you truly about to let your assigned lost belt be destroyed? What will you say to the others? Well, I'll just say I did my best, but it wasn't good enough. Oopsie. I don't want to get on their bad side either. I'm just going to go with the flow here. Well, I trust you even less now. If you're so easy going, why'd you join the cryptos in the first place? You could have just turned them down from the start. Well, that was a cruel thing to say. <clears throat> oh. oh, do they not fully know? I guess they don't know. Circumstantial change confirmed. I have a proposal for you chosen ones. An offer for those of you who were cast aside. If you desire acclamation, then choose rebirth. If you desire indolence, then choose eternal sleep. It makes no difference to a god. I didn't want to have to tell you this, but we didn't have any choice. Thawing the coffins might not sound like a big deal, but it's basically recovering dead bodies. We were all dead in there. We were never going to wake up from that darkness. But then the foreign god came and told us, You may live on as a crypt or die as a master. And, well, that was that. Honestly, I still don't know who that, who or what this foreign god is. Krishtarya seems like he does, but not, he's, he's one not to talk. He's not one to talk. 
All I know is in exchange for being given new life, we were to be thrown out into this newly wiped clean world and put in charge of growing our respective lost belts tree of emptiness. Of course, I know we betrayed all of mankind when we chose to leave our coffins as cryptos, so I'm not under any illusion that, you know, we're the real victims here. I'll even admit that I thought this uh, game to see who'll get to be king of the world sounded fun. Whatever will be, will be, you know? If an old monk friend of mine were here now, he'd probably say something like, You guys were just unlucky. Hmm, old monk friend, huh? Still, there's nothing to be gained from cursing your fate, and besides, I was already getting bored with it. Old monk friend. My brain is instantly going to that one guy. The master of Arkwid from... What the frick was his name? Arkwid Master Extra. Uh, what's, what's, who's your master? Where's your master? Where's your master? I'm looking for the master. I can't find your master. Um, why can't I see his weird name? Uh, Monji, Monji Gato. Okay. Hmm. I don't know. Because he's the only one that I could think of for a monk, but we'll see. Still, there's nothing to be gained from cursing your fate, and besides, I was already getting bored with it. So I'm just going to do the best I can and try not to throw my life away for nothing. I'm not going to sell out my fellow cryptos, and I have no desire to fight all of you to the death either. And since that works out for both of us, is not good enough for now? Then does that mean nobody on Team A willingly chose to side with the foreign god? Mm, I don't know about all of us, but me, Kadok, and Ophelia sure didn't. Oh, wait, I guess Ophelia's an exception. She swore to become a cryptid for her own very personal reasons. Then please, just tell me one thing. Where does the name Cryptors come from? Is it a code name for something? Did the foreign god give it to you? No way! You're really bringing that up now? Oh, right, I just remembered. You never knew this, did you, Mashi? Now it all makes sense. The name Cryptors comes from Director Marisbury. It was the title he gave to the special masters who were chosen for Team A. Huh. Huh. Anywho, now that that commercial break is over, that like, wait, what? That fade out was literally for a commercial break, which I sure hope YouTube detects and like does puts one there automatically. Let's talk about how exactly we can go about beating our Juna. Cause I'll be honest, I've got nothing. <laughs> This is no laughing matter. He even shrugged off my noble phantasm like it was nothing. Although now I understand why, it's because his very divine existence is that strong. There's no trick or even magecraft involved. It is just what it's just what he is, plain and simple. Geez, so he even cheats just by existing? How are we supposed to beat him then? Honestly, you're in much worse shape to fight him now that Carney's out of the picture. I just don't see how Ganesha there could ever fill his shoes no matter how hard she tries. Hey, you don't have to rub it in. Believe me, I'm well aware. I say we look for Ganesha number two. True, there could well be another rogue servant here. If you find them and win them over, it'd be the fastest and surest way of bolstering our ranks. That'd be great, but it is a big if. Well, if there's anyone else like Ganesha around here, there's a good chance someone in town might know about them. Why don't we head back to Beachu again and see what we can find out? Sounds good to me. Then what are we waiting for? Like they say, no road is long with good company, and it's best to make hay while the sun shines. <laughs> Don't worry about a thing. I'll make sure we never run out of things to talk about on the way. Can't say that was actually a concern. I kind of want him to be with us forever, but I know he's going to betray us. I know he will. Oh? We didn't have any choice. That's right. I'd forgotten that. Everyone had their reasons for making the choices they did. That's why things ended up like this. Nice people. Not so nice people. People who were interested in me. People who weren't interested in me. I know everyone on Team A. 
I'd forgotten I knew that. I only just remembered that they were also people who lived in Caldia. That's why right now I... If I was stronger, maybe I wouldn't be feeling so conflicted right now. If only I was a perfect demi-servant then. Mash? Mash, it sounds like you're trying to, like, get stronger, and I wouldn't mind that. Foo-hoo! <laughs> oh, sorry, it's nothing. It looks like we're almost there. I already have an idea for who we can talk to first. It would be great if she knows something. I wonder who it's going to be. Yep. Other gods? Um... I guess you haven't heard anything then. Maybe using the word God isn't the best way to go about it. it. Might be better to take a different approach. We're looking for someone who's very much out of place in this world. In other words, someone who finds this place as wrong as we do. If someone like that exists, they'd probably be out fighting Kali, regardless of what Yuga it is. So the question we should be asking is... Here, little miss, let me put it to you this way. Have you heard any rumors about naughty heretics who don't obey your god's teachings? Oh, besides us, of course. Oh, I think the mayor would probably know something about that. Well, I wouldn't call them bad exactly. Everything alive in this world is God's creation after all. But I would say they're just a bit too focused on the wrong things, unfortunately. Nonetheless, yes, I've heard there are people like that in the village on the other side of the mountain. I'm told they spend most of their time taking up weapons and fighting the Kali in defiance of the gods' teachings. They certainly do things differently than we do in Bichu, where we accept God's trials with piety and grace. But I suppose that is just the way they choose to live their lives. It's still a bit shocking how much more amiable he is compared to when we first met him. But at any rate, this is great. Now we have a promising lead. Let's head for this village right away, Master. Sounds good to me, but just be aware that you might not be able to get there by nightfall. I think it's better if we don't move around too much in the middle of the night, so if you find a good place to make camp, don't be shy about doing just that, okay? Don't worry about that, I hate going at a forced march. If I have to go hiking, I make sure to take it nice and slow. As long as I'm around, I won't be letting anyone push themselves too hard, not even if they want to. Well, let's head, uh, head, head out camping, I guess. Are we going to the cave first? All right. Cave, cave, cave camping. Sleeping in the whole statue. We'll be heading back out at dawn, Pepe. Are you sure you don't want to get some sleep? What about you, Masha? You're still standing watch this late. I'm a Devi servant, so I'm fine without going to sleep for a while. Funny to hear how you're okay without sleep, but the Divine Spirit Servant over there apparently can't get enough. Well, that's okay. This works out nicely for me. But if I stand watch with you for a while? Uh, no, that's fine with me. That was only a pretense, of course. I was actually just waiting for a good chance to ask you this. Did you get a chance to talk to Ophelia? Yes, I did. We didn't have a lot of time, but I still feel like we said a lot. Much more than we ever expressed to each other in Caldia. I'm <laughs> glad to hear that. She always did want to have a good heart-to-heart -heart with you, I could tell. So, what do you talk about? Well, one of our topics... was romance. Oh, no way! Seriously? Oh, what I wouldn't have... would give to have been a fly on the wall for that. I can't think of anything better than Ophelia talking about romance. I can just imagine three of us chatting over a nice cup of tea, hours passing in the blink of an eye. Do you know what happened to everyone, Pepe? I heard what happened from Kirshtar and the others, yes, but those are just boring old facts. That's not really what I want to know. That's why I wanted to ask you about them directly. I see. I don't think there's anything I need to keep secret, so I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Even though I'm a cryptor? Even though I'm your enemy? Yes, I remember that. Despite everything that's happened, well, we were both still members of Team A. That hasn't changed just because you're a cryptor now, too. I see. Well, thank you. I'm sure Kadok, Ophelia, and Akuda are frustrated by how things turned out, but, well, I doubt they have any regrets. So they all fought bravely, huh? And here I am, just pathetically doing whatever I can to survive. I don't think that's anything you need to feel bad about. 
Hey, I'm still on the crypto's side. I can't help but be frustrated, too. No matter how hard it is to survive, I still find myself thinking there, well, might have been a better way to end things. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bring down the mood. If things don't go your way, even after you've struggled as much as you can, your only choice is to give up and move on. I just had to come to terms with that again. That's just my lot in life, I'm afraid. Nothing I do s s uh, quite seems to work out. Really? But you always seem to me like you excel at everything you do. <laughs> That's only because I stick to things I know I can do. No, I'm talking about fate and destiny. But hey, that can be extremely motivating in its own right. It's not like I've given up on everything you know. All right. I think it's time I got to bed. A complexion this perfect requires plenty of sleep. Besides, how could I look Ophelia in the eye if I neglected my own skincare after I keep admonishing her? Thank you for telling me what happened with the other cryptors, Mashie. Good night. Of course. Uh, good night, Pepe. Messes me up that Pepe Pepperuccino isn't his real name. Although, that wait. That could lead to a crazy thing with the monk friend, right? We'll have to see. Pure grassy plain. The queen of the walled village, huh? Alright, good thing it's a question mark, because I have no clue what we're fighting. Okay. What do we got, what do we got? Uh, we, remember, we have four days of nice and warm, so that's good. So that's nice. Ah! Damn sacred beasts of all the luck running into a huge pack of them like this. Just smack. Seems luck was not on our side today. I was hoping we could pass them by without incident, but oh well. Ah, uh, who? so sorry. I was close to them that I ended up drawing my bow in fear. Don't worry about it. The blame is partly mine for forgetting how it feels to hold a weapon for the first time. I'll need to reevaluate both the technical and mental aspects of our training program. Who is this? At any rate, the rest of you hurry back to the village. I'll hold them off here. But... No buts. We can't risk leading them towards the village. Besides, the more commotion we make, the more likely we are to be captured by the Lokapala we've been hearing rumors about. The Lokapala are said to serve God directly, and we have incredible power in their own right. The moment they find us, it's over. We can't let that happen. I could manage on my own if it came to that, but if you or the village caught their eye, it'd be disastrous. So, I want you all to head back to Dival ahead of me. And don't forget the supplies we collected. But you can't possibly handle them all on your own. Don't worry, my plan is to defeat them all. I'm just buying us time, and I'm well accustomed to the trials of endurance. Besides, I already told you. I am not human, I am something else. Something with the power of a thousand ordinary people. A shadow of humanity who manifests in this land by the grace of the rightful gods. Oh, I think I have an idea who this is then. I know this isn't the first time we've had to stay behind, but man, it sucks not being able to drive around our vehicle. What's the point of even having it then? Don't be ridiculous. If the enemy were to fight and destroy the border, the jig would be well and truly up. Camouflage function or not, we still need to make sure we stay out of sight at all times. That mad dash for me to pick up the field team during the Kaliuga was under the most extenuating of circumstances. There would be no repeat performance. Yeah, yeah, I was just grumbling. I know you're right on this one, Gordy. For once. Oh, just a moment. Do you think you two can stop and hide in that tall grass over there? Yes, I'll set the Ornax to silent mode. Please be as quiet as you can, everyone. There they go. It was like watching a Sacred Beast parade. Luckily, they don't seem to have noticed us. Let's stay here and wait for them to pass. They're certainly very pretty to look at. No one of the people here would call them agents of God. They really are just like any other animal without a Kali around, huh? I wonder what they eat. Maybe we could use food to tame them? What? What? what what's with that face? They're gone. Good, then let's keep going. It shouldn't be much farther to our destination village. Woo -hoo! I see something. Well, that must be it over there. Thank goodness we didn't run into any trouble on the way. I like the wall they put up here. It gives the place a real freedom fighter vibe. The Mayor Beachu did say they'd go around finding Kali here. If anything, 
I'd be surprised if their village wasn't fortified like this. Huh? Whoop. Come on, hurry! It's us, open the gate quick! Those people seem to be in an awfully big hurry to get inside. I wonder what that was all about. It looks like we are far enough away from them that we they didn't notice us. But did you see? They may have only been modified farm implements, but they were still carrying weapons. They really do seem to be different from the people of Bichu. We may well be able to learn something new here. I think you're right. Let's go see. Huh, they're not opening the gate for us. And they're not answering when we knock, either. Dang, if only we could jump over the wall with some crazy servant powers. Hey, open the gate for us. Stop having it be closed. I'll have you know, most nations would be thrilled to have me pay them a visit. Let me see if I can hear anything from inside. Who was that? Is someone there? Oh, uh, it's, this is it. They found us. We're done for. What do we do? What are we going to do? How should I know? There's no way we can fight them off on our own. We'll just have to keep the gate closed until she gets back. I'm not sure why, but they sound very agitated. Oh, I've got a bad feeling about this. And my bad feelings about this sort of thing have always had a way of being always right. At least we know there are people inside. And since we're servants, we could probably just jump over the wall if we have to. Of course, just because we can doesn't mean we... You there, what are you doing here? <laughs> the servant reading. I might be right. Seems luck is with you today, master. Of course, we aren't yet sure whether this is good or bad luck. Whoever the servant is, they're headed your way at top speed. Be on guard. They just jumped clean over us and landed on top of the gate. Yeah, I was right. There she is, the thumbnail girl. It's a servant we've never met before. Well, that's too bad. It would have made things a lot simpler if you already knew each other. I hate getting chewed up by strangers. It's like a hundred times worse than when it's someone you know. What I'm trying to say is this lady looks really pissed off at us, so maybe we should do something about that. That divine aura. Curses. Despite my best efforts, it looks like you finally found us. You must be the ones who serve the false god, the Lokapala. No, no, you got the wrong idea. That's not us. Whoa, whoa, slow down. Us? The Lokapala? You must be joking. Don't lie to me. It can't be coincidence that you've shown up now. Besides, I heard you planning to invade our village by jumping over these walls. I have no idea what you're talking about, but I'm sure this is all just a misunderstanding. I only mentioned jumping the wall to rule it out as a bad idea. So you continue to lie to me. Very well. If you have finally learned of my existence and the existence of this village that seeks to end the false god cycle, then so be it. I will run and hide no longer. If the time has come to fight, then I shall rise to the challenge. Prepare yourselves, Lokapala. You will not be taking anything from me this day. Even if I must face a god this time, I will make sure to defend my home to the very end. I think she's a saber. I think she's a saber. I'm like... Fairly certain she's a saber. So let's go with, um... Let's go with a, a spish. No, no, just, just ish. No spish, just ish. Yeah, we're gonna go kill saber. We got you, but let's actually switch you out for, um... Let's see here, because then we can get... Um... You... And let's switch out for you. And let's switch out for... Mm, we need. I think we need bond points with you, right? Nah, not really, actually. I think we can get your event there, so that's fine. Uh, well, let's, let's get you. Let's put you in the back. Even if we're not going to use you, let's at least get you all ready to go, right? All right, we can switch you out. Uh, and let's get... Um, yeah, you. Yeah. Although you can't really get a get an expensive one. Let's go with uh actually we will give you your card here. There we go. And now 
Let's go with filter by rarity. Can we get you a nine? Let's see here. Nope, nine's still too expensive, so we gotta give you a five. That's fine. Noble Phantasm Gauge debuff resist sounds good. All right. Let's do this thing. I think she's a saber. Watch her not be, and I'm super wrong. All right, what do we got? Ah, oh, she's a saber. That's the important thing. Forgot we get Pepe's backing hologram rose. Oh, how nice. Thank you. Um, let's start with getting as much of this as possible. Okay. Not the best damage, but fine. Charisma of Rani. Ra Rani! Okay. Hmm, that's interesting. It's very interesting. Um... Let's do... Well, we can do a full combo with you. With all your stuff. Yeah. So let's go... Because you're a servant, so then you get that big servant damage boost. Let's give that a try. At least most do. Watch this be one of the servants that doesn't, and I just don't know. Good damage. Boy, it's nice to just do big damage. Sapahi's Assault, Invincible, Damage. What's the point of a damage cut in Invincible? The answer is probably that the Invincible lasts longer, right? Um, okay, in that case, spend this turn getting as much meter as possible. We don't have anything to break through their Invincibility. It's actually hitting for a lot. Like, all things considered. Probably because they know that I'm getting healed at the same time. Uh, let's go... One... Two... Three... Okay. So I don't know if she has a single target or multi-target. I'm gonna hit and evade with you because you still have basically full meter. Um, hmm. You can evade. And let's just hold off on using your special there. Let's just go one, two, three. Oh, is this not going to be enough? Oh, it's not. No, you're not using your super. Okay. That's good. Alright. Let's break your, your thing here. And then from there... Okay. Is that going to be end of battle or are we doing the next phase? Protect it through and through. Defense up. Okay. We're continuing. We can do a triple noble phantasm, which would be quite good. Pop that. Pop that. Pop that. Pop that. Uh, yeah. So then let's go... One, two, three. Do the most we can with that overcharge. We'll see how this goes. I am the it was fun doing the video where I went through all the different um, Noble Phantasms there. Uh, so at least I, you know, I did the first 50 so far, and that was a lot of fun. So I'm looking forward to doing the next 50 in some time. It's a fun little stream. 
How much? 196. Will you have enough? Let's see here. Probably not, but we'll see. Ooh, you actually came real close, actually. All right. Um, let me do a full thing with you. Does this one get? Which one gives stars? Let's increase your gain. That's your gather rate. So none of those is give stars. Random effects. Let's try that. Very cool. Uh, increase your attack after one turn. Okay, so in that case, let's go one, two, three. Try and get big stars. That'd be nice. There we go. That's what I want. Yeah, that's what I like. Nice. And if we didn't get it, the next turn we would have, because now we have 41 stars. <laughs> nice. Hey, this mysterious servant leveled up. Let's let's not talk about his name because we don't know what it is yet. Hint hint wink wink. Oh, this place is like right right super close. Actually, that's a lot of different servants, huh? Or different enemies. Uh, let's go Why is Ryder up? Oh, because of you. Um, sure. Let's go with our strong team. Right? But we'll bring you up because then you'll be there first. You're actually down, so let's actually go like that. And then... Sure, that should be fine. I'm going to sneeze. Hold on a sec. Never mind, I'm good. Hmm... Yes, I'm aware. I'm well aware indeed. The fox woman is up to something, isn't she? Then if I may, allow me to tell you something. Something of great importance. Oh, no, no, no. Of course I would leave the decision of what to do with this information entirely in your capable hands. All I would ask of you, all I would humbly ask of you is your attention. That said, I must stress that depending on how things turn out, matters could grow very serious indeed. Why, what if my colleague, one of the foreign gods' disciples, ostentatiously sent you, sent here to help you, were to become the very sort of thing you cast out of your own world? Huh. Huh. Please listen to us. The Lokapala are our enemy as well. We only came here in the hope of finding allies who can help us fight against them. Talk is cheap. I've lost track of how many times someone claimed to be my friend betrayed me. Hey, look, she's back, and she's fighting to protect us. We're saved! Then those are Lokapala. Damn it, they finally found our village. Please, my lady, help us. The Lokapala showed up right after we got back to the village. We've been barring the gate and holding out until you arrived. There, you see? I knew you couldn't be trusted. <laughs> what did I tell you? Misunderstandings only invite further misunderstandings. I've seen this sort of thing before. Back at the clock tower. Well, for all my life, really. I would look around one day and realize everyone had forsaken me, even though I didn't do anything wrong. Well, maybe that's not entirely accurate. There was this one time I... Sorry, hun, but your life story is gonna have to wait, okay? The circumstances being what they are, she doesn't seem to truly be trying to kill us, but she's certainly very hard-headed. Her movements are as firm as her beliefs, it seems. Hey, Rama, are you feeling this too? Ma'am, it's faint, but she definitely has the air of a divine spirit. Maybe she's a pseudo-servant like you? Good grief, I knew India had an expensive pantheon, but that can't be the answer for everything, can it? One does not generally run into a divine spirit at every corner, so to speak. Forget that. How do we get her to listen to us? We'll never get anywhere if we don't clear up this misunderstanding. We've been telling her over and over, but she won't listen. Phew. Well, aren't you going to try to scale these walls? You'll need to do better than that. Is that... But, it looks like something caught her eye. She seems to be looking at something far away. What's going on? Well, this is certainly less than optimal. I know you're in the midst of battle, but I strongly urge you to take note of your surroundings, particularly what is behind you, immediately. Behind us? What's up? Oh, beasties! 
What? Sacred beasts? Uh, wait, this pack looks kind of familiar. Are these the ones that passed by us by earlier? Those are going in a different direction. I'm pretty sure they didn't notice this at all. Maybe there's something here that lured them this way. A different group from the sacred beasts we encountered earlier. Of all times for them to show up. No, this is no coincidence. It only makes sense that the Lokapala would have means to control them. They must be trying to make their way into our village and cleanse it, especially since one of our elderly died this morning. Huh? Be gone, foul agents of the false god. You will not be claiming our dead today. Oh, they eat dead people. That's why Pepe was like, oh, my, my. She does not make for quite the striking figure, doesn't she? She certainly does. She must be the manifestation of a noble heroic spirit here to lead, guide the people of this pl uh, place along the right path. Huh? Well. Oh, is she clumsy? What happened? Did someone knock her off the wall? No, um, it looked to me like she just sort of lost her footing. But now she's wriggling around where she fell. Looks like, uh, looks like her feet are stuck in some hole in the ground. Curses. I can't believe I fell right into one of the pitfalls we dug to prepare for the next Kali attack. G give me a moment. I'll be out of here in no time. Anyways, uh, yeah, let's... Looks like they're pissed off about all the dramatic tension evaporating, though I could just be projecting there. We can't let the sacred beast hurt her while she's incapacitated. Let's take him down and keep her safe, master. You know it. Get him, guys, and this will prove that we're on our side. Foo! Right? Should be like, oh, wait, yeah, no, you're... You're actually fine. And we'll be like, yeah, we are. Heck yeah. That's the good stuff. Right? Hopefully. I could, I could be wrong. Okay. We got some... Some of these guys, which we can actually do a full combo on, which will be quite nice. Yeah, our, our, our attack is definitely not as down as it was before. Aw, oh, come on. They definitely hit hard. I will say, the enemies of this lost spell are really hard hitting compared to some of the other ones. So let's go one... Actually, let's go one, two, three. Kill the one in the back and then do as much damage as you can. Okay, not bad. Okay. And let's go one, two, three. Okay. I don't want to waste Noble Phantasms on these guys right now, for sure. Oof. Okay. Let's go one... I should just go one, two, three. Come on. I mean, it's only 600 each turn, which isn't a lot, considering we're taking, yeah, like, that much from each hit. Um, so let's go... One, two, three. Dang. Here I thought we'd kill and move on, but no, the numbers, they lie to me. Okay. Now we're going to go, because you're going to do your super, so we're going to do this on you. Right? And we're going to go, you know what? Let's go full combo. Do as much as you can. Hold out for the next battle. Okay. It's fine. Uh, even though the buffer's removed. But that means that the lock-on was removed too, so it's all good. Okay, let's go one, two, three. Big damage on that last hit, hopefully. Ah, good damage. Okay. Okay, we got this. Yeah, we got this. We'll go one, two, three. Do as much as you can here. Okay. So let's 
pop these supers now. Oh! It's- oh, it's a Garuda! I know the Garuda. I fought you in, uh, many Final Fantasies. Okay. Pop that. And actually, let's give that. Let's give you Big Buster up, because you got that. This gives... Debuff immune, restore HP, and noble phantasm gauge for yourself. Sure, might as well get that going. Crit strength up, you don't need it. Target focus and noble phantasm gauge. Okay, so let's go one, two, three for the last big hit there. All right. Give it the big, the big Excalibur. Good hit. All right. Nice damage. We just got the Darwin back. Okay. One, two, three. That's all we need. Good stuff. What do we get? Got some feathers. Good, because those are always, always the worst to try and grind for. Hey, did that prove it to you? All hostiles in our vicinity eliminated. Well done, everyone. Well, now do you understand we aren't your enemy? Yes, I do. I'm not so foolish as to insist otherwise at this point. You see now that I was gravely mistaken. No one would fight against a sacred... No one who would fight against a sacred beast could possibly be allies of the false god. I am truly, sincerely sorry, and I thank you for your assistance. Please... Tell me why you've come here. No, on second thought, it's only right that I tell you about myself first. Yes, you have a point. All right, then. Let me first ask you. Are you a divine spirit? Yes and no. I am a servant, but right now, a goddess resides within my body, sharing her power with me. When I was first summoned to this land, she was already there inside me. Huh, there have been plenty of cases where a divine spirit would inhabit a person from the past to become a servant. And since heroic spirit servants are technically people from the past, I guess it makes sense that a divine spirit could inhabit one of them too. So she is a, like, pseudo-servant, but a pseudo-servant of just not a fate character, but just a servant. Though I definitely haven't heard of many cases where it happened quite like this. I expect it's because this god and I happen to share the same name. I believe that having the words, sounds, and names match is very significant when it comes to Magecraft. It's true, there's power in names. Then again, I was originally given this name in the hope of receiving her blessing, so perhaps it isn't much of a coincidence after all. You don't say. Hmm, okay, that makes sense. So what's this god's name? Lakshima. Or Lak Lakshimi. Did, have I been saying it right? Lakshmi. I am Rani of Jahasi, a land which once existed in India. Who was named for her? My name is Lakshmi Bai. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't know who that is. I have no clue. People, people might be like, "Yo, you don't know Lakshmi Bai?" No, dude, I'm sorry, I don't. Who? What? Okay. All right. You know what? Let's let me give a quick five second Google. Lakshmi Bai, and if that, okay. All right, Lakshmibai, or the Rani of Jahasi, was an Indian queen uh, from 1843 to 1853. So she's quite modern. Okay, she was one of the leading figures of the Indian Rebellion of 1857 and became a symbol of resistance to the British Raj for uh, Indian nationalists. Okay, all right. So she's, okay, sure. Understandable. Um, I know nothing about that whole era of the world. I'm gonna be super real. 
that is well and beyond where I am. Foo-foo! Lakshmi Bai? I would like you to think that anyone would be a bit embarrassed to recount the history of their own life, no matter how proud of that life they may be. So that's why Holmes had been unusually quiet. Hmm. All right, then, I guess I'll... Lakshmi Bai is a hero from the 19th century India known for her role in the Indian Rebellion. Thank you. Oh. Oh, <laughs> thanks for jumping in, Captain. Why don't you take it from here? Despite being born to royalty, she took up a sword and led a small rebel army in order to protect her nation of Jahansi. She was known far and wide for her leadership and charisma. At the time, revolts were breaking out all across India under all manner of different circumstances. When one uh, small state tried to revolt, the neighboring nations would often end up siding with the British. That's why Holmes doesn't want to bring it up. Isolating the rebels and cutting them off from working with like-minded people in other regions. But the Jahansi rebels managed to hold out to the very end. And it was all thanks to their exceptional leader, Lakshmi Bai. I wouldn't call myself exceptional. I was just flailing around trying to hold everything together as best I could. Between Kunwar Singh, Tataya Tope, or T Tatya Tope, and many others I could name, there were no end of leaders more talented than me. All that said, you sound like you know a lot about our struggle. Are you Indian yourself? I'm nobody. Just another nameless. It doesn't matter where I'm from. I'm done now. Over and out. Well, we're at it. We should probably also go over your divine spirit, Lakshmi. Though I'm sure Ganesha and Rama know a lot more about her than I do. In Indian mythology, Lakshmi is known as the goddess of fortune, prosperity, beauty, and... And the consort of Vishnu. Right, that's right. Then, could it be... I am an avatar of Vishnu, and Sita is an avatar of Lakshmi. Sita, are you in there? I'm sure you are. I'll be able to feel your presence. I'm guessing this has cleared all of you as well, given that her grip on my skull is strong enough that the bones are starting to crack. But unfortunately, I sense no trace of Sita inside her. Who is this man advancing on a woman he's never met before as if to propose to her? Do you mind if I break him? I understand how you feel, but please go easy on him. Rama has his own complicated history. Uh, I see. I suppose I can't blame him for misunderstanding. I should have been more precise. The goddess Lakshmi exists within me more as a power source than anything. I can barely sense her consciousness at all. Okay, alright. It's almost as though her heart has been implanted in me to provide me with energy. I doubt my output could measure up to that of an unadulterated divine spirit. So I'm afraid I am not a manifestation of the goddess Lakshmi so much more as that the core of the human, Rani Lakshmi Bai, with small elements of the goddess. Then Sita really doesn't exist inside you as I suspected, right? <laughs> of course she doesn't. Now that I think about it, if she had, I would have sensed her well before you introduced yourself. But I was not even able to tell that deity within you was Lakshmi. You must only have her divine power and nothing of her consciousness. Ganesha didn't realize who you were either. Of course, that might be because he was never very close to you, seeing how you're just as up there in the pantheon as his mom, Parvati. Ganesha? Yes, now that I mention it, I do sense a divine presence inside you. One I would never in a million years have guessed by looking at you. Yeah, I know it's true, but it's true. Believe me, I've spent plenty of time... Uh, uh, whoa, reading... I've spent pretty much this entire time wishing all this were some weird joke. And I am Rama, the King of Kasala. Surely you've heard of me as well as my beloved Sita. Uh, oh, of course, there's not a soul in India who doesn't know your name. Uh, forgive me, I thought you were just a, an unusually youthful young man who haven't yet learned how to behave around women. Oof, that's, uh, there's, there's, there's something a little bit loaded there, I feel. Maybe now's a good time to share our side. Good point. We have a bunch of things we need to tell you about. Who we are, how we got here, what we're trying to do. It's a long story, but I hope you'll bear with us. And I think that about sums it up. Hold it, hold it. What about me? I thought you were saving the most important figure in the group for the end to make... So as to make a lasting impression. Ah, uh, yes. This is Gordolf Music, who I absolutely, positively, definitely didn't forget to introduce. Nope. And as you can probably tell from his sheer girth, I mean dignified stature, he's our commander-in-chief. <laughs> Indeed I am. A stout build is the mark of a true elite after all. As a commanding officer, I expect you to treat me with all due respect. I have one question for you. Are you British? 
Oh no, oh no. Uh, uh, no, I'm not. What about you? Me? Oh, that would be telling, on. You've got to get to know me better first. I suppose I can at least tell you that no, I'm not British either, though I did spend a good bit of time at the clock tower. Oh boy, well, there's one last person in our group I should introduce you to. Sorry, Holmes, jig is up. You can't keep hiding forever. I assure you, I was doing no such thing. I was only waiting for a more opportune moment once things had settled down. Good day, Miss Lakshmi Bai. Sherlock Holmes, detective at your service. Are you British? Yes, I am literally the most British being on this entire world. Oh. The Indian Rebellion was, well, it was a war for India's independence against its colonizers, the British. And since Lakshmi Bai lost her life in that conflict, I imagine she has some strong feelings about it. Though I do get the impression there's someone else here with some connection to that. I have no idea. Also, Gor what is the what what is the music family? Hmm. Oh well, guess it's not my place to say anything here. I was only a few years old when that war broke out, so I can't personally apologize for my country's actions. No, it's all right. I'm sorry. That was rude of me. There's a little sense in my asking that. It's just an old habit, one I can't seem to shake. You have nothing to apologize for. It's not for me to say whether you should or shouldn't feel that way. Nor is it for me to say whether you should or shouldn't hold on to those feelings and, or try to forget them. All I can say for sure is that our country's histories are intertwined. Certainly neither of us can pretend otherwise. If this hadn't come up now, Tanner would have no doubt noticed the air of discomfort between us and gone on to learn what happened between our countries for himself. If there's any meaning to be found by having people from the past come together like this, besides the role we play as servants, of course, I suspect it lies there. I cannot believe what how nuanced a take that is. Wow. Yeah. Huh. Agreed. I will think of you as no more than a man by the name of Sherlock Holmes. Beside, be, uh, besides, under these circumstances, the more allies we have, the better. That was... Wow. Huh. It's not the first time Fates addressed this. There's been a couple times, but this is the first time I think in the main storyline it's been addressed this way. Which is, like, really cool, actually. Then does that mean you consider us allies? It was difficult for uh, to convince the people of Dval of the wrongness of the situation, but once I did, they agreed to work together to forge their own destiny. Their village here is now the base of, for all such like-minded people. As you are warriors fighting against God, just like us, I would be honored if you fought at our side. Well, it's a deal. We'll just not have any British servants. Also, boy geez, does that make the appearance of one of the servants that is on the enemy's side make a lot more sense. Foo-hoo! <laughs> I guess the counterforce must have summoned you too. Have you been here long? Yes, I'd say it's been at least ten days since I arrived. Then you must have been caught in the world's re recreation a number of times. How did you survive? God or not, but make this entire loss belt is a major undertaking. Oh, Juno wouldn't change how he goes about it just because a servant's been added to the mix. So long as he doesn't think of you as unnecessary or defective, I expect he'd just bring you back along with all the other people. Ugh, it just galls me thinking how the very survival in this loss belt is completely dependent on his absurdly arbitrary standards. It's natural for gods to be somewhat self-centered given their immense power, but our Juno definitely takes it too far. Oh, speaking of which, you should know he's already got his eye on us. If you would join us, you'd wind up with the whole evil label and you won't be able to survive the world being remade anymore. That's fine. It could only have been a matter of time before he took notice of me anyway. Besides, you have a way to evade the destruction, yes? If it comes to that, I'll be counting on your help. You mean the border? Well, yes, of course you'd be welcome to join us there, uh, wouldn't she? The border is the last bastion of hope for all humanity. We can't just go letting any old servant we meet on it. Or under ordinary circumstances anyway, but in this case, I suppose we don't have a fair handle on her true name and background. And it would be a shame to lose a valuable ally so soon after finding one. Very well, I'll authorize your authority in the border in case of emergency. You have my gratitude. Of course, ideally, I hope to be quite finished with this place long before we, we even use that preposterous noble phantasm of his again. You said it, honey. Fortunately, he only ever does that at the end of the Kali Yuga. So it'd be just PG if we could all put a stop to this before then. 
So now that we got a new ally and all, what's our next step? I've already got something in mind for that. There are risks involved, naturally, but the reward should be significant. Now that we're in the middle of the first relatively peaceful Yuga, and especially now that we have more allies, this would seem to be the perfect time to investigate one thing in particular. The God Sky Boulder, right? <laughs> Remember that thing we've been wondering about ever since we came to this Lost Belt? It's the biggest, most mysterious thing here by far, and it's got to contain some useful information. Now, we want you guys to go and uh, finally go and investigate it. God Sky Boulder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who boy. There we go. Got that. And we got some shields. Very nice. I'll take those. Yo, we're going there, huh? Skirts of the Sky Boulder. That is a fun sentence. All right, guys. Thank you all for watching. And we'll see you next time for some more Let's Play Fake Grand Order as we go check out the Sky Boulder. We'll see you then. Ciao.